recording this. Hey, golf fans, we are really happy to be back here with Back Nine Report. We got the PGA Championship coming up this week, the second major of the year. We got Mike May with us. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing well, sir. Uh, down in Georgia this week, uh, traveling along parts of the Georgia Golf Trail and reporting on it. All right. You were in New Jersey last week at the LPGA event. And we want to start off talking a little bit about uh, golf last weekend. Uh, we had the Byron Nelson down in Dallas last week. Jason Day, there's a blast from the past. Finally gets back to the winner's circle in Dallas. His last one came in 2018 at this very event, but on a different course. It has been a long, hard road for Jason returning from injuries that have hampered him over the past few years. A former major champion, his back pain was so bad that he – was not able to practice, only showed up to play in mandatory number of events, but he's past that now. He's, he's much healthier now. He's ready to go. He's been playing great the last six, seven months. He even considered retirement, Mike. He was in so much pain and playing so badly. He felt so bad about it. He is one of the good guys, and it's good to see him getting back to the top of the game. What do you think? I think it's uh, an amazing story. I've been keeping an eye on him for quite a few months. He's been trending the right direction, but it just goes to show how tough it is as well as he's been playing in recent months, to get to the winner's circle and uh, at the end of uh, 72 holes is a major achievement. And uh, even more so in a major, of course, we have a major coming up this week. Yeah, also, we want to talk a little bit about the LIV tour. Wait, you remember the LIV, right? That's where they pay those guys all that, all that money. Uh, two former, they were in Tulsa last week, two former major champions uh, battled uh, down at the end there, Dustin Johnson made a seven on number 10 on Sunday, but put it together uh, to tie Cameron Smith and Brandon Grace after 54 holes at 17 under and force a playoff, which DJ went on to win. Smith was five back with nine holes to play, card a bogey-free nine under 61, while Grace, who shot 61 at first round, closed with a five under 65. A little side note here, Mike, uh, Phil Mickelson, you remember him, Phil Mickelson, right? Uh, who gave everyone a thrill at the Masters, had returned to his old form and finished dead last in the field at Tulsa. What do you think about that? He, evidently, he was not too excited about Tulsa. He remains consistently inconsistent. Uh, but, of course, what he did at Augusta leaves you thinking that uh, when, the, when the event is big enough, he may well rise to the occasion. He still has the ability. But uh, going to, from that second-place finish at Augusta to a last-place finish, it just leaves you shaking your head about uh, where is Phil Mickelson these days. The Champions Tour had an event last year. They had their first major of the year, actually. They were in Birmingham, Alabama for the uh, traditions. It was a relatively close competition for the first three days, but Steve Stricker ran away from the pack with a 65 on Sunday for a six-shot win. It's his third win at the region's tradition and five starts all by six shots. Gave the 56-year-old five major wins, six most on a 50 and over circuit, Mike. Yeah, Steve is uh, continues to be a great putter, tremendous ball striker. And, um, no surprise uh, if he stays out long enough and stays healthy long enough, maybe he's the next Bernhard Langer. That may be somewhat premature, but Steve just looks uh, he looks like he did on the PGA Tour. He's just playing with older competitors and and doing well. He just ran away with it yesterday. I don't see Steve being a Bernhard Langer. I don't see him playing that long. I, I you know he's got too many. He likes to hunt. He likes to fish. He likes to do other stuff. Uh, I think he's fine playing golf right now, but uh, I just don't see him playing for another 10 years or something. Hey, you were in New Jersey for the Cognizant Founders Cup at Montclair Country Club. After shooting her best round of the week, a bogey-free 67, Jin Young Ko won the Cognizant for the third time with a par on the first playoff hold to de defeat the de defending champion Min Ji Lee. Ko had won the event in 2019 and 2021, but headed in the final hole on Sunday, one shot behind Lee. Birdie in the last got her into the playoff. This is her third win in just five starts at the Founders Cup, Mike. Jin, Jin Young Ko is healthy. When you have a healthy Jin Young Ko, uh, she's as good, if not better, than anybody out there. Um, she, uh, again, you said it, she's her third uh, win in this event, and it's her third win at a different venue in this event. So she, clearly, she's a Founders Cup uh, uh, front runner, and um, we also had some some of the former great golfers from the LPGA at the event: uh, Bessie King, Amy Alcott, um, 
were there. Nancy Lopez was there earlier in the week. Uh, so it was a fun event to uh, see the stars of the past and the present. Yeah, they always make uh, they always bring the uh, older ladies in for this. Uh, um, and uh, the founders now, or I think there's only one lady left, and she probably doesn't travel that much. But she's 90 some years old. So, um, you know, for Jin Young Ko, this moves her to number one, the race of the CME Globe. She's a, you know, a multi winner. It's her second win of the year. She jumped one spot to number two in the Rolex ranking, just a few points behind Nellie Quarter. Mike, Nelly Corda, Jin Young Ko, when they're right, when they're healthy and they're playing, there's nobody any better, is there? No, uh, but it's worth noting uh, Nelly Corda uh, had uh, Joe LaCava, who's been uh, cat, uh, the caddy for Tiger for a number of years. Um, he came up caddy for, and she unfortunately missed the cut by by one shot. She finished at two over after. Well, we'll blame that all on Joey then, okay? Yeah, he had the weekend off, so. <laughs> He probably was paid for the weekend, uh, assuming that uh, he would uh, that she would qualify for the weekend. But uh, it's a tough golf course, and uh, it uh, will definitely penalize uh, poor putts, poor shots, and poor decision making. Mike, uh, we got a little tournament coming up this week. As I mentioned earlier, the PGA Championship is going to be held at Oak Hill Country Club. Um, this is really a wonderful, historic old Donald Ross course. The original course was built in 1901 with just nine holes, but it was at a different location. Where they're at now, Ross built that, and they moved there in 1921. Ross built, I think it opened in 1924. Um, and this is just a beauty. Um, there's no question about it. The latest renovation was completed in 2019 by Andrew Green, who is known for restoring Donald Ross courses to their uh, original specs. He is. He worked on. Uh, he worked on uh, Scioto Country Club. He also redid Inverness. Uh, if you got a Donald Ross golf course, you want to bring it back uh, to a, kind of its original spec. Andrew Green is your guy. He he does an outstanding job. We've had him on the show. We've talked to him. Had him in the Ohio Golf Journal, Michigan Golf Journal. Um, this club, Mike, has hosted two U.S. Opens, three PGA Championships, two U.S. Om Ams two PGAs, as well as a senior U.S. Open plus the 1995 Ryder Cup, which Europe won by a single point. It's a hilly, tight, it's a great ball strikers golf course. Ball striking, short game, find the fairways, get it up and down. That's going to be really important this week. Uh, rough's going to be three inches, narrow fairways. Um, even though the course is fairly far north in upstate New York, uh, the reports are in great shape. And PGA setup man Terry Haig will have some surprises for the players, I'm sure. Past winners here include Lee Trevino and Jack Nicholas, who won majors. Curtis Strain won one of his U.S. Opens at Oak Hill. The latest winners in the PGA there, Jason Duffner won the 2013 PGA, and Jim Furyk was the runner-up. So that tells you something. you got to be a good ball striker around this golf course. The course can play over 7,300 yards, but they won't max it out this week, Mike. Ball striking is going to be a big issue this week. It uh, it always is in a major, and I think that uh, the uh, the way Oak Hill is going to be set up, it will it will penalize those who are off the beaten track more than most. And again, if you look at the list of past champions, those are all great golfers. And when when Jason Duffner won, he was amongst the best on the PGA Tour. He's somewhat faded in recent years, and I heard that he withdrew. Um, if uh, I think Oak Hill is sort of like Augusta National. You don't go there and find your A game. You bring it with you, and uh, you may not be dealing with an A game. Uh, the winner will be a very deserving one on Sunday. You don't luck into winning at Oak Hill. Mike, we got some LIV players in the field. Uh, they still are eligible. We've got Abraham Anser, Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson, Emiliano Grillo, Harold Barner, Joaquin Neiman, Patrick Reed, Paul Casey, of course, Phil Mickelson, Taylor Gooch, and Thomas Peters. You know, in my way of thinking, with this being a ball strikers golf course, iron play is so important. Uh, Joaquin Neiman and, and Patrick Reed could be the favorites out of this group for this course. What do you think? Uh, I think those are good choices. Uh, I think the, uh, the live golfers have a little bit of a – uh, chip on their shoulder. Uh, also, from a world rankings point of view, they're motivated to do well here because this is their uh, one of really four chances to get world rankings points by by being in these majors. Uh, K 
Captain Mickelson improved their stature after Augusta. And um, I think we'll see uh, the live golfers uh, do well. I think they'll be rooting for one another uh, as much as they'll be trying to win by themselves. Um, you, uh, uh, I think all those golfers have been successful at one point or another, but I'm looking at Kepka. I, I like him. Uh, he, uh, has been as long as he's healthy and he's won two PGA. So even though PGA's move around, he's used to that event. He's won it twice. I'm sure he'd love to win a third one. Yeah, and he's and he's been playing pretty good. He has a win on the LIV. Mike, before we get into the the uh, more of the of the PGA Tour players, can you just tip your uh, camera down just a little bit? You're going off the bottom here. We're losing you. Uh, we're losing. There you go. Look at that. Oh, you are a handsome devil, man. There you go. I'd like to see more of you. Hey, uh, now let's talk about the PGA Tour players. Of course, Jason Day is coming off a win last week. Rory McIlroy is still smarting from his miscut at the Masters, trying to get back to his uh, world-class form. Kyle Morikawa got his PGA Championship at TPC Hardy Park a couple years ago, a course that is very much like Old Hill. Free line, tight. This fits right into Colin Morikawa's kind of uh, game plan. Uh, Justin Thomas, with his iron game, he's always a threat on any golf course. If he can keep his driver and play a little bit, this could be a good week for him. Spieth, uh, I just don't think it's going to be a great week for Jordan. Not his style of golf course. Too much trouble for his uh, unpredictable driver. Scotty Scheffler can play well on any course, but he might have to rely on his short game, which is very good. Finau, I don't see Tony uh, doing that well, but... He did win the Rocket Mortgage Classic at Detroit Golf Club, uh, which is very similar. It's a Ross course, tree line, very similar to what they're going to see at Oak Hill this week. And then we don't want to forget about uh, that guy uh, from Spain, John Rahm. Uh, if his driver will put him in the fairway enough, he will be a factor here. What are you thinking, Mike, on these guys? I think you've given good, cryptic, convincing notes on all of them. I nod with agreement. Uh, Justin Thomas, defending champion. Uh, was someone who sort of backed into that win last year, but nevertheless, he won. Uh, how can you go against John Rahm? He's world number one, won the Masters. How can you go against Scheffler? He's been trending well. Kepka's playing well. Uh, Mickelson closed with a, a, a 65 in Augusta. He's a former champion of this event. There's, this is uh, the most difficult thing to do is predict a winner in a golf tournament, especially a major when you have so many players playing well. Jason Day. Hottest player in the land right now because he won just past weekend. He's a former PGA champion. So um, there are a lot of horses for this course. And um, I think I'd be surprised if the winner does not come from any of the names you just listed. Well, I'm going to go off, off script here just a little bit. I, I kind of named those guys, but I'm going to tell you who I like real quick here, okay? I really like Xander Shoffley on this golf course. Uh, I like his precision game, especially his iron play, and he should do well this week. Matt Fitzpatrick is still playing with a ton of confidence from his U.S. Open win last year. This is his type of golf course. Where he won at the, at the country club, again, very similar. Tree line, tight, tight golf course. Patrick Canley, this is a very good course for him. As way he putts, any golf course, his game travels anywhere. But uh, I, I, Xander Shoffley, Matt Fitzpatrick, and Patrick Canley, I'd be surprised if two of those three guys aren't in the top ten on Sunday. Well, I'm just going to pick Kepka and give you the field. I think he's uh, trending in the right direction. Oh, you're a homer. You guys ride that Kepka horse, man. <laughs> um, I uh, There's been times in the past when uh, I didn't think he'd win and he, he won or did well, so I'm going to stick with him. Uh, I think that he has a point to prove after the Masters. And, um, again, I, if we can uh, keep the pace of play, I think that's the biggest detriment to, to Kepka more than most is – keeping the pace of play consistent so we don't have all these breakdowns in the middle of the round. They become five, five and a half hour rounds. He doesn't want to be following Cantley like he did at the Masters? He would, uh, <laughs> he would probably want Cantley to be in the last group, but he'll be in front of him. <laughs> waiting at the end for him to finish so he can claim the first place prize. I'm going to give you two dark horse names here, Mike, and then see what you think about this. Hyrule Hatton. He has the game, if he can control his emotions and get off to a good start, he could be a factor come Sunday. I like Tyrell Hatton uh, here also this week. And I'm going to say, I'm going to throw in a blast from the past here, Ricky Fowler. He's just been steadily improving over the last 18 months. This could be a very good golf course for him. It could 
be time to finally get his major win, Mike. I, I like those choices. My dark horse pick is is Tommy Fleetwood. Um, oh, yeah, it's a good choice. Tommy um, is uh, always a threat to win, and I'm, I'm shocked when he misses a cut. And uh, he's a little under the radar. He's uh, not really spoken about, but his A game is is as good as any. And uh, it's uh, I'm not sure how the internationals have done in the past at Oak Hill, other than that Ryder Cup win back in '95 when when uh, Hal Sutton put Tiger and Phil together, and that was a, a, a massive failure. But uh, I'm going to pick uh, Tommy Fleetwood as my uh, dark horse, and uh, Brooks Kepp is my favorite. Got a couple more names for you here. Uh, John Daly, Sean McKeel, and Y.A. Yang are in the field this week. What do you think are, uh, the odds of them picking up another PGA Championship win? Quite low. I think if they make the cut, they'll be happy. And I'll, <laughs> be, uh, I'll be somewhat shocked if John Daly makes it through two rounds. Uh, he's got a a broken down body, and I know in the past he's petitioned for a cart. I'm not sure what the PGA of America's stance on that issue is, but uh, I remember Wyatt Yang when he went up in Minnesota and picked up that trophy and held it like a like a, a, a you know a piece of uh, luggage or something like that. But uh, Sean McKeel, he was uh, the greatest week of his life, and he's still cashing in uh, on that check. But uh, that wonderful seven iron in there on the 18, right to to within inches. But I think both those guys would be. Happy to make the cut, and uh, I would be shocked beyond shocked to see uh, one of the three in the winner's circle, especially John Daly. Though it would be a nice sentimental win, but that would that would shock the world. Just making the cut for those three guys would be amazing. I hey, agree. Mike, one more guy, one more guy. I want you to watch out for Sung J M. After the Wells Fargo two weeks ago, he jumped on a plane and flew to Korea to play in a Korean tour event. He was the highest ranked player in the field, got the win. M is the Iron Man of the PGA Tour, playing nearly every week. And if the time change doesn't prove too difficult, he could be a guy to watch this week at Oak Hill, coming off a win in Korea. I agree with you, but uh, the human body can only do so much, and I think he may have bitten off more than he could chew. But you know, going that far to get a win definitely is a is a boost to your confidence. And uh, if he can come in rested, somewhat rested, um, I'm not sure if he's played that course before, but. Uh, I think many of your picks that you just mentioned a few minutes ago are probably better than than him. So yeah. So we're in upstate New York. It's only you know mid May, so we could get some a little colder weather. Uh, here in Michigan, we're getting down to 30s at night still. Uh, it was only about a high of 65 yesterday. It was up to about 70 today. We're on kind of the same uh, latitude here as Rochester, uh, just across the just across the lake a little bit. But uh, I think it's going to be a good week. It's a beautiful old golf course. Really looking forward to seeing that. And uh, with the LB, LIV players in there, with the PGA Tour players, we got all the big names in there, Mike. And I, I think it should be a really good week. Yes. Um, speaking of weather, I was up in New Jersey last week at, um, at the Upper Montclair Country Club, just west of New York City. And the weather was uh, surprisingly warm. Uh, I think this week uh, in the greater New York City area, the temperatures will be in the 70s, maybe a little cooler, but as long as it remains dry, I don't think the temperature will be that much of a, uh, a big deal because after all, they don't play at midnight, they don't play at four in the morning, and um, they won't be that cold when they tee off at, say, 7 or 7.15. Mike, that kind of wraps up what I've got for the PGA preview. You got anything else for us before we sign off? One final thought. It's somewhat uh, funny. Last Wednesday night, uh, I was at Upper Montclair Country Club, and I happened to run into Minji Lee. Uh, in the clubhouse and it was about six o'clock and she was looking for some water in one of the nearby coolers and there there were no bottles of water and I said I'll be happy to go get you some bottles of water so I went down to the volunteer headquarters she wanted three I gave her four but before I left I said I'm happy to get the water for you but you have to promise me one thing and that is you must play to win this week and she said well I am the defending champion I said I knew that and then she came in second so I was feeling as if the four bottles of water I gave her on Wednesday night may have played a role but she ended up uh, finishing second <laughs> should have got her five bottles maybe she didn't want <laughs> the next day on thursday i said how were those bottles of water she said very good so um i've got a friend for life in ng lee she probably looks at me as a water boy hey guys uh that's the uh that's gonna wrap it up here for our pga preview uh for back nine report and uh, once again we want to thank mike may for coming in and join us uh he's a uh, 
he's a busy guy. He was uh, with the LPGA Tour last week. Now he's traveling around in, jo in uh, Georgia, you said? I am. Uh, you'll be seeing some posts to social media on the sights and sounds of North Georgia, Brasstown Valley, Sky Valley. We played Stone Mountain today. Uh, it's been an interesting, fun-filled week. As you know, Mike is the chief editor of the Indiana Golf Journal. Should uh, note that the Min Michigan Golf Journal is uh, up on the website. Uh, Indiana and Ohio will be there uh, before the end of the week. So uh, um, check those out. Uh, you want to check them out because we got our uh, full uh, full breakdown of the Scotland uh, golf trip. Uh, we got everything in there, Mike. Uh, I don't, it was it was quite a trip, and uh, I'm still trying to recuperate uh, after being home. Yeah, I, I, the stories you've told me of uh, were just uh, amazing, and I'm sure that you're going to wow us with uh, your firsthand uh, testimonies and memories of your trip to the, the home of golf. All right, golf fans, until next week, thanks a lot for watching Back Dine Report.